To build this version of a sound controlled lamp, you'll need an Arduino, a solid state relay, a spark fun sound detector, or some other sort of sound detector, small breadboard, battery to power your Arduino, some way to connect that battery to the Arduino, some pieces of wire, hookup wires, perfectly fine. You'll also need two connectors that you can that will slide in to two of the lugs on the relay as well as a this is just a cheaper extension cord one of the two prong extension cords and you'll need two ring terminals that'll fit the size of the extension cord a few words about two of the main parts to this project first the sound detector I'm using the spark fun sound detector and it's really nice for something like this. We're basically going to be building a snap-on, snap-off, or clap-on, clap-off style circuit. And we're building this not just for the sake of the lamp to be able to turn something like a lamp on and off, but also to learn how Arduino toggle code works. And it's a kind of neat few little lines of code that you can get the Arduino to change the state of a pin, a digital pin, or an analog pin for that matter, based on some incoming analog signal, analog or digital signal. We're going to use an analog signal from this sound detector. There's a nice write-up on it on the SparkFun website in their tutorial section. I'll put a link to it in the description. We're only going to be using three of the pins. Note that this board doesn't come with these headers soldered on. You have to solder them on yourself if you decide to buy this. So you'll need enough soldering skills to attach these headers without tearing up the board. But we're just going to use the ground, the VCC, and the envelope pin. The envelope pin on the sound detector is a peak detector output. It's chasing the peaks and the valleys of the analog signal that's received through this microphone. And there's a write-up cir circuit schematic and everything you could ever ask for about this particular board on the SparkFun website. Something to note is I've never had to put there's a place on this board for an external resistor. You can increase or decrease the sensitivity of it based on including a resistor here or not. I've never had to add that external resistor. I have three or four of these because I use them in a lot of projects. I've never had to add this external resistor. But you may have to depending on if your board is overly sensitive or it's not sensitive enough. There is variation in manufacturing as with most electronic components. But I've had a lot of good luck with this little board and it works well for the particular project of being able to snap your fingers and turn a desk lamp on or off or turn on some other AC device. That being said, if you want to turn on an AC device with the Arduino, there's a lot of ways you can go. You can do it wirelessly through RF modules. You can do it like I have some preliminary footage of doing it with a servo and some linkage, which I'll get that video up in the code for it as soon as I can. But before then, I decided to add this particular way of turning a light on and off with clap your hands, snap your fingers, using a solid state relay. I bought this, well, the same place I bought this board from SparkFun. It's not too expensive, nine, ten dollars And it works well for this particular setup that all you basically have to do is connect one of your digital pins from your Arduino to the positive side, the DC side, and then the ground to this. And you can have an Arduino control 24 to 380 volt devices AC as long as they don't exceed that 40 amp mark. And as a word of caution, if you're not comfortable working with AC, if you've never worked with line voltage, this may not be the project for you. You can watch the video, see how it's done, then I'll mention multiple other safety features you can add to the circuit once it's done. But if you're not comfortable with AC, it will kill you and you do not want to mess with it without consulting a professional um, AC electrician or an AC engineer. I'm just showing basically of the theory of how you could do it if you want to control a lamp.
and I'm not claiming that it is the absolute redundant safest way to do it either. It's just one way you could do it that I've done, I've had no problems doing it, and it tends to work out perfectly fine. But there are other features you could add in to the circuit we're going to build that would make it safer than it is currently. And also, just a note, I didn't mention it in the parts, but if you use this to control, like I'll be controlling a 40 watt desk lamp, which if you do your ohms calculations in terms of current, that's under half an amp of current that will actually be running through this side of the relay. So there's really little to no chance that the back of this will get hot or that it would ever overload. But if you get closer to this 40 amp mark or even 10 amps, depending on the AC device you're wanting to switch, you might want to think about getting some form of heat sink or a big piece of metal to dissipate the heat from this. These do get hot. And another word of caution about solid state relays in general, I'm going to put a link to a Canadian website, Fidgets, that does a write-up, a real nice write-up on the safety aspect of solid state relays controlling AC devices, as well as adding in fuses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a lot of things that can be added to a solid state relay circuit to make it a lot safer. But just a few initial thoughts is that these things do tend to leak a little current through here when they're even when they're switched off. So that's just something to keep in mind. Is that if it's a really, really low power AC device, it may stay partially on even when you have it switched off with the Arduino. There's ways around that that you can fix that. And that's why I'll put the link in the description to the Fidgets website. There's ways to work around the fact that these relays sometimes don't stop all of the AC current going through them. They stop 95% of it, but sometimes not all of it, depending on how they're made. This one has optical isolation in it, so the side that's hooked to our Arduino will be completely optically separated from the AC side. It's got a triac in here, etc. You can read all about it. Also, that given that this will be hooked to AC, it has this plastic cover over it. People should be able to see that. And if you're going to control something AC, you want this cover for an extra layer of protection so that the kitty doesn't come hopping across it and get electrocuted on these poles. <laughs> then you yourself don't. But the ideal way would be to build this and then have it in some form of enclosure that won't melt down, especially if you're using a high amperage AC device because these things generate a lot of heat. They're used to control industrial machines a lot of times and manufacturing plants, and they do work. But they do generate significant heat when you run significant amperage through them. And they are there are two holes here that just the right thing with the kit or something could put, could put something in here and short it out or get electrocuted. So anytime you're messing with AC, in any part that hooks to AC, you really want to learn about it and think about it before you go down the road of controlling AC devices. This is my safety disclaimer. If you don't understand AC, watch the rest of the video, learn about it, learn how to do this, but I'm not encouraging anyone to do this unless without supervision of someone that knows what they're doing. That being said, now put the link in the description for this part. It's a good part. It works. To get started, the first thing you can do is take your extension cord. This is, and this gives you the freedom to control more than just a lamp when you use an extension cord. And that's one of the reasons I use it. Plus, you don't cut your cord to your lamp. But the very first thing is take note with this cord, you need to cut the hot or live wire in the cord and before you do that you need to be looking at both ends of it. It's not in the wall, nothing's plugged into it. And the hot wire is going to be the narrow plug-in in the US anyway in standard 110, 120 coming out of the wall. The narrow prong is an indication of the hot wire. The wide one is your neutral that will eventually go to ground. This is just a two prong so it doesn't have the third external ground. So the narrow poles, hot wire, 
and you can see there is a narrow slot and a wide slot in the plug. The narrow slot, this is the wire you want. You just follow it down and chase it and then you can put the brake in the wire. You can cut the wire close to the plug side or toward the, the part that plugs into the wall or the socket side. Either one. Doesn't matter. But this is the hot wire and I've just cut it crimped on two ring terminals that are large enough to fit the solid state relay and I put heat shrink over them. That's all that's been done here. The particular solid state relay I'm using, the diagrams indicate that the load needs to be hooked on pin 1 and then toward the wall needs to be hooked on pin 2. That's just the circuit diagrams. You could do it either way given that there's a triac in here. Some of these though can be directional so you want to pay attention to what side do I hook the load on. Sometimes that matters, sometimes it doesn't with solid state relays. That's you would need to check out the write-up I've attached in the description. And in this case, here's the load side plug. This is where the lamp will be. So load side. We'll go here to the wall. We'll go here. All one has to do is pull off the plastic cover and attach the relay. You'll want to make these snug. You don't have to strip them out or anything like that. You don't have to gall them. But you do want them snug. You don't want this coming out. That's why we use ring terminals rather than slip terminals on the AC side. And then, once we have our relay and our cord, note this cord's unplugged. Always unplug anything when you're working with AC before you going to the circuit and then these are just two pieces of standard hookup wire with the terminals hooked onto the end they're the right size to slip under the lugs on the relay this is the DC side that will go to our Arduino and then on the positive terminal we'll need one as well at this point you can put your plastic cover back on you could test this. Some solid state relays would enable you to test it. You could hook this up to 5 volts, this up to ground, and you could take your multimeter and put it in the narrow plug and on the narrow prong and see if you get continuity across when you power this. This one has a red light that indicates when power is going through it. I would encourage people do that. See if you have continuity between these. If you don't, then look at your data sheet and see what is the internal setup of this relay. Should, should I be able to have continuity here or not? Or does it actually take an AC signal running through the an AC voltage running through the wire to trip the solid state relay in the open position? You just can check it. But if you have a relay like this one, you can put your multimeter on this, the narrow prong, put it in the narrow prong here. Hook your 5 volts, 9 volts, this is a 3 to 32 D volts DC. So anything in that range you could hook up to it and make sure that you have continuity ac across these two poles. If you've got it across this one and this wide one, you know that you've cut the wire in the wrong place. So that takes care of the AC side of the circuit. Now for the Arduino and sound detection side. As I mentioned, all we're going to use is the ground, the VCC, and the envelope pin. You just take your sound detector, plug it into your breadboard, like that. Then you can hook up the ground of the sound detector to the ground rail of your breadboard. can hook the VCC of the sound detector to the positive rail. That's all there is to it. Then enters the Arduino and you'll want to connect the 5 volts on the Arduino and the 5 volt slot to the 5 volt rail on your breadboard. 
than the ground either would do but just make sure that you hook the ground to the ground rail of the breadboard and then the ground and the Arduino just like that then we can hook analog pin 1 that's the analog pin we're going to use to the envelope pin on the sound detector and the envelope pin is this one that's hooked into the envelope pin which has peak detection circuitry so there's A1 goes to the envelope pin on the sound detector at this point we can give ourselves some room connect the ground rail of our breadboard to the other ground rail and we're going to use digital pin 7 you could use any of them you want but I'm going to use digital pin 7 there's digital pin 7 on the Arduino just to one of the rows in the breadboard now we can zoom out a little bit and that's the completed circuit as far as the Arduino side goes we have our sound detector the envelope pin from the sound detector is connected to analog pin 1 on the Arduino the 5 volts pin on the Arduino is connected to the VCC of the sound detector and the ground on the Arduino is connected to the ground pin of the sound detector and in turn we've got our ground rail of our breadboard stretched out and now we need to do is enter the solid state relay plug one wire into the ground or the ground wire from the relay into the breadboard and then in the same row that digital pin 7 is we have digital pin 7 connected all the way to the positive part of our solid state relay and that's all there is to the circuit you can lay it out this way if it helps at this point all one would need to do is connect the Arduino to their computer desktop laptop standard USB AB cable now we're ready to look at the code